This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I do want to welcome you today to the worship and the fellowship of Delisle Community Church. I'm glad for every one of you who've come today. So relax and enjoy the service. And most importantly, I hope that you will sense the presence of Jesus with us. Because he, he comes to us in his word. And he dwells, the Bible says, in the praises of his people. So, so let's pray, shall we? Father God, I want to thank you so much that we are in your presence now. It's great to get together with friends, new friends and old friends. But to know that we are together with you, the King of Kings, well, that's absolutely amazing. So do something for us today that isn't in the bulletin. Send your Holy Spirit among us and within us to do a great work in our lives. For Jesus' sake, amen. Let's all just join together as we sing and worship the Lord through song. invite God to establish his kingdom here among us. We talk about coming to church, but we are also the church, and he establishes his kingdom among us. So let's just join in and sing. Come set your room.
Psalms 33, verse 10. The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes, but the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his inheritance. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne he observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts so he understands everything they do. The best equipped army cannot save a king, nor is great strength enough to save a warrior. Don't count on your war house to give you victory. For all its strength, it cannot save you. But the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from the death and keeps them alive in times of famine. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Amen. We want to continue in God's word. And I'm going to read uh, three passages now. And I want you to notice how faith figures prominently in each of these passages. First of all, from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. God's covenant with Abraham. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O oh, Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heavens and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. And now from the gospel, Luke 12, picking it up with verse 22. And Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, and do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. 
And finally, from the letter to the Hebrews, we're going to pick it up in chapter 11 and read 16 verses. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found, because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith. Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Wow, this is the word of God. At the peak of its power in 117 AD, the Roman Empire covered 2.3 million square miles, or 5.9 million square kilometers. In other words, it was big. <laughs> It spanned three continents, Europe, Africa, and Asia. It reached from England in the north, Spain in the west, North Africa in the south, to Israel, Syria, and Turkey in the east. It was one of the largest and most powerful empires in the history of the entire world. With military efficiency, what Rome conquered, Rome conquered dominated. The idea was to make everything and everyone Roman in order to move its armies and its trade and its culture into newly conquered lands, Rome built roads. You've heard of the Apian Way or more correctly the Via Apia? the Via Fulvia, the Via Aurelia, the Via Flavia, and the Via Flaminia. Those were just the names of some of their roads. They, they built many more. Now, all of these roads had something in common. All these roads led to Rome. And from that, we get the adage, all roads lead to Rome. Now, you may wonder where I'm going with all of this, so stay with me. These roads were so well constructed that many of them remain visible today. 
Some have been developed into major transportation arteries within Europe. Towns that developed along these roads are major metropolises in many cases today. Now we are all familiar with the mileage signs placed along our highways, right? If you uh, head out on Highway 7 and start going towards Saskatoon, it'll tell you how far it is to Saskatoon, or if you go the other way, how far it is to Rosetown. These highway signs tell you which road you are on and how far it is to the next city or town. These marker signs on our highways have their roots in the orderly system of Roman roads. In 20 BC, the Millennium Arium, the golden milestone, was set up in Rome near the Temple of Saturn. All the roads out of Rome were measured from that point. Emperor Constantine called it the Umbilicus Romae, the navel of Rome. <laughs> On it were inscribed the names of major cities within the empire and the distances to them. There were thousands of milestones set up along the Roman roads, indicating the distance from the beginning point in Rome. Wherever you traveled in the empire, as long as you were on a Roman road, you knew where you were. You knew how far you were from the heart of the empire, and you knew the way to go to get there. If you were a Roman citizen, you could set out from what is today England, or Spain, or Egypt, or Turkey, or Israel, knowing that if you followed the road, you would eventually get to Rome. As followers of Jesus, we are citizens of a kingdom far greater than the Roman Empire. A heavenly kingdom. The kingdom of God. Philippians 3.20 tells us our citizenship is in heaven. For the Christian, all the roads lead to home. Our heavenly home. There are many roads, but there is only one way. We become citizens of the kingdom by faith, by faith alone. We don't know what challenges we will face on the road marked out for us. Each person walks a different road, a different path. But faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who loves us and gave himself for us, keeps us on the road that leads to our heavenly home. John 3, 16, the best known verse in all the Bible, tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Faith in Jesus. Now, some people think that it's okay just as long as they have faith in faith. You know, just believe. But they don't say what they believe in or who they believe in. Just believe and everything will be okay. No. Faith is only valuable when it is placed in Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I remember sharing that verse with somebody one time, and they said, you know, you're awfully narrow-minded saying that Jesus is the only way. I said, if you have a problem with it, don't tell me. Tell Jesus. He's the one that said it. Hebrews chapter 11 is often called the faith chapter in the same way that 1 Corinthians 13 is called the love chapter because Hebrews 11 is all about faith. Faith, as the Bible describes it, is a combination of belief and trust. Belief in God's Son and trust in Him. Here's the Bible definition of faith. 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Someone might wonder, why should I refuse the pleasure of the moment for an uncertain future? The answer, of course, is that the future is not uncertain. The future is as certain as the promises of God, and God always keeps his promises. Now, Hebrews 11 tells us of Abel, and Enoch, and Noah, and Abraham and Sarah. Each of those people went through a different set of experiences, traveled a different road, but in every case, they counted on the God who keeps his promises. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23 says, He who calls you, that's referencing God, He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. And that's why as Christians, we can believe the incredible and receive the impossible. Faith trusts God for salvation. My friend Betty was already well along in years when, by faith in Jesus, she received God's gift of eternal salvation. I remember the day that it happened. Marvin, Marvin, and you would remember this too. Bev and Betty were about to head down to the warmer States, Arizona, for the winter. They'd been attending the church here for some weeks then, months, I guess. And, uh, and Marvin had encouraged me that uh, we should go and, and talk to them before they left because at their senior years, there's no certainty that we'd see them again. And we, were, wanted, to be, we wanted to be sure about where they stood in their relationship with God. And so uh, we went over and, and visited them in their home showed uh, Marvin uh, many of their sporting uh, trophies and, and souvenirs because they were always big in the sports world. And then later, we sat at the kitchen table, and I still remember Betty praying and trusting Jesus to forgive her and make her God's own child. And Bev joining with her in affirming that belief. When they got back from a few months in Arizona, Betty's health challenges made it possible or impossible really for them to, to continue to live in their home here in Delisle. And so they moved to a senior's apartment in the city where more resources were easily at hand. I visited them very recently. And when I was there, I, I read with them from uh, John, chapter 14, uh, where Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And we read on a little further. And when I finished reading, Betty said, it's hard to believe, but I do believe. I thought it was, that was just beautiful. We live in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. Titus 1 and 2. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, our eternal destiny is forever changed. If you have never placed your faith in Jesus Christ to save you, to forgive your sin, and to make you part of God's forever family, do it now. You can do it right now where you are, just in your heart. Lift up a prayer to God, asking him to take control, to forgive your sin, that you receive Jesus who died and rose again as your personal Lord and Savior. But that's not the ending. That's just the new beginning. Wait, there's more. Faith trusts God for salvation, 
Faith also trusts God for protection. I love Psalm 91, the first two verses. He who lives under the protection of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. So we do not live in fear that something bad will happen. As a matter of fact, we already know that bad things will happen. Bad things happen in this broken world. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But I'm so glad he didn't stop there. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We know whatever happens, God will never leave us or forsake us. He will see us through. You know, there's an old hymn that went like this. Some through the fire, some through the flood, some through great trial, but all through the blood, the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And wait, there's more. The faith that believes in God for salvation and protection also believes in God for provision. Scripture says, my God will supply all your needs out of his abundant supply of riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And Jesus, in his famous Sermon on the Mountain, began this portion by saying, Oh, you of little faith, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's Matthew 6, verses 30 to 33. God's care for his children is the best care that there is and the best that there could ever be. And finally, faith not only trusts for salvation, protection, and provision, faith trusts and believes God for direction. Direction in life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So don't worry about what you should work at, young people, who you should marry. God knows. Stay close to him. Stay close to Jesus, and he won't let you go wrong. Scripture says the steps of a man are directed by the Lord when he delights in his way. Psalm 37, verse 23. You don't have to worry about getting off track if you stay close to Jesus. Read your Bible. Ask God to speak to you through it. Stay close to Jesus and he won't let you go wrong. So I have a, a question for you today. If you trust God with your eternal destiny, I mean, that's, that's really the biggest thing, isn't it? If you can trust him with your eternal destiny and believe that he has given you his gift of eternal salvation, why would you not trust him for protection, for provision, and for direction? If you can trust him with the big thing, why not trust him with the I won't say small thing, but smaller thing, right? Because this life is not all there is. This is just the prelude to eternity. Believe God's incredible promises and receive what is humanly impossible. A relationship with God that is real and personal and an eternal life in God's heavenly kingdom. Let's pray. God, there's a man in the Bible that prayed a prayer that some of us can relate to. He said, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. For some of us, maybe that's where we're at. 
We believe. We need your help to overcome our unbelief. We trust you for our salvation. As we confess our sin, we know that you will forgive us. As we call upon the one who died for us and rose again, we know that you will take control of our lives. That you will make us children of the Heavenly Father. Citizens of the kingdom of God. And so God, as we trust you for our salvation, we choose also to trust you for our protection, provision, and direction. We believe your incredible promises. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we will receive what is humanly impossible a relationship with God that is real and personal, and an eternal life in God's forever kingdom. Thank you.